So, what lives down there, I hear you ask. Don't worry, you won't be disappointed. I have got a couple of creatures here for you. And we're going to start right now with the Dumbo octopus. Uh, yeah, so you heard me right. It's called the Dumbo octopus. So basically, this is an octopus that wouldn't have been out of place in one of Walt Disney's animated films. That, that's if we're going by the looks, that is. It has a body with a length of 12 inches, or around 30 centimetres. Now, this octopus is durable enough to make it the deepest dwelling octopus known to science. It can be found between 9,800 and 13,000 feet down. So you're looking at around 2,987 and 3,962 meters. Now, it's what's known as an umbrella octopus with webbed tentacles that give them an umbrella appearance, kind of like a starfish with a balloon for a head. Now, unlike most octopuses, if you were on its menu, you wouldn't be chewed up, but instead you'd be sucked in and swallowed whole. So the next one, um, the deep sea dragonfish. Now, basically, this creature's got some oversized teeth. It's got a hideous face. And basically, it's dubbed the assassin of the deep. Now, <laughs> imagine a fish without scales. Instead, it's got a slippery, slimy skin that resembles an eels. Now, these creatures are about six inches or around 15 centimeters long. They prefer to swim between 700 and 6,000 feet under the surface where the waters are lightless and cold. Now, this species, like many of its kind, relies heavily on bioluminescent body parts which leverage internal chemical reactions to produce an eerie glow. The fish may use this glow to communicate with other fish, is theorized, or to provide camouflage. It also dangles a lighted barbell or whisker-like protrusion from its lower jaw. Other fish are attracted to this barbell, mistaking it for an easy meal. Naturally, this turns out too good to be true, because in a flash, the dragonfish gets lunch instead. Whoa. So up next, we have the barrel eye fish. Now, <laughs> the rarity of light in the dark depths of the ocean provides opportunity for the adaptive predator. So creatures of the trench, like the barrel eye fish, evolve unusual features to use shreds of light to their advantage. How unusual, you ask? Well, for starters, get this. This fish has a transparent head. Imagine if humans had a transparent head. That would be so cool. So weird, but so cool. Yeah, a transparent head. Now, inside that head are two sensitive barrel-shaped eyes, which are most frequently pointed upwards, allowing the fish to see silhouettes of its prey. Now, as for the clear head, Scientists think this feature may simply allow the fish to collect just a little more light, which may give the strange animal a bit more of an advantage over its competition. Now, the barrel eye fish wasn't even known to humans until the year 1939, when it was pulled from its habitat 2,500 feet or 762 meters below the surface. Now, thanks to remotely operated vehicles, or ROVs, equipped with lights and cameras that can withstand the pressure, we're able to observe the barrel eye more closely. Yet this odd fish still holds many, many secrets, leaving scientists puzzled over its life cycle and reproduction patterns. I still think it's so cool that it's got a transparent head. It's really weird, but it's so cool at the same time. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. Up next, we have our friend, the Benthi Codon. Now, I hope I'm not butchering this name. So it's called the Benthi Codon. Now, basically, the Benthi Codon or Benthi Codon, it's an unusual type of jellyfish that prefers an environment far out at sea at depths of more than 2,500 feet or 762 meters, often right on the sea floor. Now, these are compact jellyfish with a rounded top called the bell, naturally. The bell is typically smaller than the three quarters, um, or smaller than three quarters of an inch to 1.2 inches in diameter, and it's laced with an estimated 1,500 wispy red tentacles, which it uses to whisk itself through the water. Now, although many types of jellyfish are transparent, the benthocodon has an opaque reddish coloring on its bell. Scientists believe that this hue may help mask the bioluminescent glow of tiny animals that the jellyfish eats, hiding it from danger. Like so many animals in the trench, this species remains a mystery to scientists.
Coming up next, we have our friend, the sea devil anglerfish. Now, if a fish has the word devil in its name, it's a safe bet that it's going to be freaky. Now, I don't know, man, but this fish sounds to me like the weird Thanos of the deep sea, the weird little boss of the deep sea. Now, let's start with the sea devil's looks. As its name strongly hints, this is a fish that could have swum up straight from hell itself. With this misshapen body, razor-like teeth and cold death stare. Now, although they're bizarre and scary looking, at least they're not huge. Now, females generally top out at around 8 inches, which is about 20 centimeters long. Males are much, much smaller at maybe an inch or around 2.5 centimeters long. <laughs> now, in a strange evolutionary twist of reproduction, two become one as males actually fuse themselves to the females. Now, what happens is their fiends, teeth and eyes disappear along with a few internal organs, ultimately turning the two individuals into one. Talk about commitment. Now, what's left of the male's body essentially becomes a storage tank for sperm that will help fertilize the female's eggs when the time is right. Now, that's what I call commitment. I mean, come on, that's for real. Are, are you kidding me? Now, as an anglerfish, the sea devil doesn't chase after its prey. Instead, it has a protrusion from its forehead that dangles a glowing law to attract starstruck, luckless animals. Kind of like the one dude who just walks in the club quietly, sits in the corner somewhere, and all the women gravitate towards them. Now, with this huge, gaping jaw, the sea devil can actually devour creatures much larger than itself. Talk about that. Next up, we've got the Goblin Shark. <laughs> now, finally, something from your worst nightmares. Remember the creatures from the Alien film franchise? Yep. Now, trust me, if you were hanging around in the deep dark depths, you wouldn't want to run into one of these bad boys. Goblin Sharks have a protruding snout that looks like a pointy sword. Now, just below the snout are a set of protruding jaws that appear to be mismatched for the shark's face. Basically, this shark is not winning any beauty contests anytime soon. What's more, these sharks aren't your stereotypical grey colour. Instead, their skin has a distinct pink hue. Now, as if looks weren't a problem enough, they can grow as big as 18 feet in length. Fortunately, you're unlikely to encounter such a beast. Now, these sharks typically cruise way down at around 3,000 feet or 914 meters down. And the older they get, the deeper they dive, man. Now, as with a lot of deep sea animals, science knows very little about goblin sharks. No one knows exactly how they reproduce and a pregnant female has never been captured. Up next, we have deep sea hatchet fish. Now... <laughs> Now, these are more than, basically, there's more than 40 known species of hatchet fit. All of them have ridiculously skinny bodies. Many of them have shiny scales too, which adds to the metallic hatchet-like appearance. Now, they're small fish, and even the biggest types grow only to around 6 inches, around 15 centimeters long, so they're tiny little fellas. They can be found chilling in the depths, pushing around 5,000 feet. Now, hatchet fish have bioluminescent bodies and they can alter the brightness of their glow depending on how much light is filtering from above. Now, in doing so, they're counter illuminating their bodies in a clever camouflage technique. Their dim self produced light reduces their silhouettes, making it much more difficult for predators to spot them from below. Quite clever. Moving on, next up, we've got our friend, the frilled shark. Now, I don't know, um, if you look at the images, this to me looks like the transformer of the deep, like the weird sort of cyborg of the deep, dark sea. So basically, these sharks have a rounded body of an eel paired with a flattened head that resembles a terrestrial dinosaur. Yeah, you heard that right, an eel with a dinosaur's head. 
Now, perhaps the dinosaur comparison might be fitting because like many other sharks, this species has ancient roots that extend back nearly 80 million years. Now, the shark derives its name from six rows of frilly gills that grace its body and it grows up to six feet or around 1.8 meters long. Now, the shark wields more than 20 rows of wicked trident shaped teeth that will tear into any bit of flesh that passes near them. They can be found at the ocean's bottom and they like waters more than 4,000 feet or around 1.219 meters deep. On the rare occasion that people snag them and bring them up to the surface, the sharks almost always perish immediately, making it very difficult for us to observe their behavior and their life cycles. Now, for years, many people assumed that frilled sharks swam and hunted like eels. Some researchers think an awkward arrangement of internal organs would make that kind of movement impossible. Instead, they say these sharks may actually strike their prey with the action of a land-based snake, making them even weirder. Up next, we have our friend, the telescope octopus. Now, if octopuses had an afterlife, this is what they probably look like. Now, telescope octopuses float and dangle in the deepest currents of Earth's oceans. This guy is not found hanging around on the seafloor. It basically drifts through the water column at depths greater than 6,500 feet or 1,981 meters. And it doesn't swim horizontally either, but rather it just suspends itself vertically perhaps to make it harder for deeper predators to see its shape. Now, if you're lucky enough to spot a telescope octopus, you'd probably wonder if the underwater pressure was making you see things. Now, its body is so clear that it's nearly transparent and between each of its eight tentacles, it is a delicate webbing that lends this species a ghostly shape. In that cellophane-like flesh, you'll see two protruding eyeballs unlike those found in other octopuses. These eyes provide wider peripheral vision so that the octopus can see predators and prey alike. Like something out of a sci-fi movie, those eyes also rotate, perhaps offering the creature an even better way to see through the darkness of its deep haven. Kind of like the ghosts or the poltergeists of the deep, aren't they? Yeah, very interesting. Moving on, so up next and finally we have the zombie worm. Now, the official name for this worm is Ossidax. I hope I'm not butchering that. Due to its furthery appearance, we wouldn't blame you for thinking it resembles something out of a Dr. Seuss's Lorax film. It's also been known as a bone worm as it can consume rock hard bones of some of the Earth's biggest animals including whales. Now, the way it does this, um, the zombie worm secretes acids to help it access the inner contents of those dead whale bones. Um, what it then does is it uses symbiotic bacteria to convert the bones' proteins and fats into nutrients that serve as its food. Its furthery branches wiggle in the water, pulling in oxygen to keep the worm alive. Now, female zombie worms can grow up to around 2 inches or 5 centimeters long. The males are microscopic by comparison and females will collect a male harem of these tiny guys on their bodies. Now what happens is eventually the males find their way into the females oviducts. Now I don't know what this means exactly man but it sounds to me like the male actually swims up the female because they're that tiny. How this works this is just this is just insane. Um, the female releases her fertilized eggs into the water the worm's life cycle begins anew and the zombie worms go about their business of cleaning up whale debris in the ocean's darkest corners. So, what do you think to the video? Did you enjoy it? Did you learn anything new, anything interesting that you might have not known before? Guys, if you did, I really would appreciate your help. Um, if you could subscribe, if you could hit the bell icon and if you could share this video with as many people as possible. I'm talking family, friends, pets ghosts whatever um it does really help us to grow and it really just motivates us to continue creating content like this for you 
Um, so hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you feel so inclined, feel free to go and follow us on Instagram as well. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess we'll be seeing you on the next one. Peace. I got my new